Hello everyone, welcome back to my corner of the internet where we are once again playing Fatal Frame 3, The Tormented. Last time, we uh, we went through the dream world with uh, Kay and uh, I don't know, I, I, we, we had some intense fights. Uh, there were some creepy ghosts and I feel like I may have kind of got a better grasp on... No, I don't. No, no, I, I, got, I got no better grasp on anything. But it was fun. It was good. Um, we basically fought ghosts and um, Kay continued to chase... Mio through um, her, uh, her her guilt ridden trap. Yeah. Was it Mio? I it was Mio, right? Yes. All right. The closet is, is as it should be, so we're going to go ahead and enter the rest of the house and see uh, what's going on. Now, I'm, I'm hearing both the rain and the spooky no noise, so it's got me thinking. I'm like, hmm. What, uh, what's, what does this mean? Because last time it was like just the rain, so, but, but part of me is also like, was that just the audio glitch? I don't think it was. The glitch, uh, tends to be just related to like audio skipping. Nope. Lower the save. Uh, I, I know that sometimes if you're persistent, you can get things to play clearly. Uh, I'm going to try to, uh, Save scum! I'm gonna save state right before I answer the phone and see if we can't get a clear recording of what that audio is. Cause I, I, like normally when it's a little bit garbled, you can kind of make out what they're saying. But this time here, I had no idea what anyone was saying. So, and I, I want to know what people are saying, right? Is this the home of Mr. Rousseau? Yes, it is. Uh, hi, my name is Kay Amakura. Uh, is you in at the moment? Uh, um, you're. Okay, I got it. Uh, is this the, the, uh, home, uh, a, a so home, um, something to that extent. Uh, yes it is. Oh, I'm sorry, is you home? So, basically, Ray is realizing that it's Kay calling, and she's like, Oh crap, I still haven't told you that, uh, you's dead! So, um, yeah, but I've been, I've been taking all your letters this whole time! Alright, Kay. Oh, I see, you's, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Oh, so, I, I now we're telling him? Okay. I, this is how he's finding out. That's great. Cool. I was doing an investigation I and I lost contact with him. Um, about that investigation. Do you know where all my letters went? Ray's like, um, uh, no. You know, just they pulling out her collar. Or not non existent, really, a collar. Her string? Uh, it's getting hot under this. Woo. I'd like you to continue investigating the manner of sleep. I'd like you to get holy crap. Kate is so chill about this. It's like, oh man, you's dead. Hey, yo, Ray, uh, if you, pr pr random person that I didn't recognize on the phone or something, I guess. I don't know. You want to continue investigating? <sighs> All right, sure. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I misread that. That's Ray. I'd like you to continue investigating the manner of sleep. <gasps> okay, that's even worse because Ray's like, oh yeah, your friend just died. By the way, can you keep investigating? <laughs> Okay, Ray, you're trash. I'm sorry. No, no, let's let's see. Why? <laughs> Holy crap. Ray's not trash. Um, I, I can't say. What? Just please? Um, would it be alright if I paid my respects sometime soon? Yes. I, I'd like to say goodbye to him. The manner of sleep. Wow, I was cringing so hard at that. I'm like, that's gotta be, you know, horror aside, that was one of the most uncomfortable moments. Um, like, and that has played out in a game for me. Like, um, like I, I, I mis misattributed the, the dialogue to, to Kay there, but like, you literally just told the guy that he's like, it was just like his best friend, right? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, by the way, your friend, he's dead. And then it's like, oh, by the way, you know that investigation you're doing? I've been reading all your letters. Can you keep doing that? And he's like, um, but like, kind of being a class act, he's like, can I just come by to like, pay my respects? Like, give myself a little bit of closure, because this is rough. Like, my niece, I think it's my niece, my niece is like in a weird ghost sleep coma, and my best friend's dead, and um, you're kind of a sociopath. <laughs> like, okay. Um, all right, the manner of sleep. 
These tattoos, could they be a curse from the tattooed woman in the manor? Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good theory there, Ray. When the tattoos spread, when the woman catches me, will I disappear like Yoshino Takigawa did? And what of Mr. Amakura and Miku? Okay, that was good. That was good. All right, and hopefully I'll be able to splice those in in a in a good way. Uh, I had to do a couple of retakes of uh, each uh, each of those scenes, but uh, yeah, that uh, that shower scene. I was like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's that that that, that is some good and creasy. Uh, good and creasy. Good and creepy. Um, this episode and last episode, I've just got this problem with I cannot speak. Speaking is hard. You should try it sometime, people. Try talking. It's not as easy as I make it sound. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> observe the cat. Always observe the cat. Wow. I don't know why. I just I'm, I'm tickled by the, the 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 idea that you have to, like, just. Well, you don't have to, but like you can. Like it's built into the game that you can like stop and just look at the cat. Wow. Um, all right, so the spot on the wall is no different. Uh, we do have some musty film we need to, um, to develop. Um, I guess we'll... Yeah, I guess we'll just go ahead and develop the, the film. I don't hear any creepy noises, so hopefully that means that I won't get jump scared. <laughs> yes, that's, that, that's right. Lower your guard. Because that, that's totally what I need to be doing right now. Uh, an old roll of film from the camera obscure. Is there anything on it? I wonder. Times three for all three pictures. That way I don't have to read it three times. All right, what have we got here? Uh, the fallen man from inside the closet of the main hall. Had he gone missing too? I wonder. Maybe now I have this photo, I can find something out about him. Oh, okay. Uh, what about this one? Oh, this shows two young girls inside the cell room. But back then, there was just one girl sitting there. Back then, I could only see Mio. That's right, Mayu was behind her. And the uh, twins... Two girls have appeared, dressed in white. The sashes around their waists are joined by a red cord. Maybe I can learn something from this photo. Oh, there's... Their waists are joined by a red cord, I see that. Was that there in, uh... Like, when we were there? All the film has been developed. Huh. It's a red sash joining the two... Or red cord. I'm noticing a slight flickering. And it's making me nervous. I'm like, is that just... Yeah, it's... it's it's like throbbing. It's like going slightly. I don't know if it, it's so slight that I don't know if like the encoding is gonna pick it up. Like YouTube's like encoding might just totally butcher the the nuance here. But like there's like a slight light tone, dark tone, light tone, dark tone that's happening, and it's making me really nervous. Like any variation, it's like I'm picking up and I'm just like, <gasps> what is that? Alright, so all we hear is the the, the rain. There's no in-house spookies. They're they're backing off a bit. Like they gave us the cutscene, but in general they're kind of backing off, which bothers me because <laughs> I don't know when they're gonna hit me. Because the cutscene that was a great cutscene. I I like that. That was when I when I first when I was first watching it. I was just like, okay, it's another because they they 
That, they did that. They gave us a scene of her in the shower already once. So I figured, okay, it's another tattoo thing. But then I, I noticed in the background, like this, this slight, like the claw thing on the wall, on the, 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 on the door. And then I was like, oh wait, no, this is something different. And like, it, it just gripped me. Uh, like that was really good. Uh, I, yeah, I don't think there's really anything here. I'm not going back up to the, the, the attic right now. Let's go, let's go talk to Miku. Uh, so yeah, like it's, it's well, it's well played. It is well played. Ray, what's the matter? Ray? Here. Miku, here you go, Ray. That picture of the woman resembles the one in this story, so I gathered some data on it. Awesome. The crawling woman. Oh, yes, her. Associated with disappearances and spirited away, there is an urban legend called the woman who crawls on all fours. In close, dark spaces like under the floor or in the ceiling or- <gasps> No! 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 Wait, was she the one we saw? Did we see one up in the- no, 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 no. No, I definitely... Oh, no. Okay, I guess I, uh, I have to go peek upstairs now in the attic. I have to. Okay. Mm in close dark spaces like under the floor or in the ceiling or closet lurks a woman that crawls out every night cursing bitterly. That's the gist of it. Many urban legends of this type are based in fiction, novels, etc. And, and real incidents. As the story spreads, images people fear are added and it becomes all the more legendized. Legendized. For example, the story The Woman Who Crawls on All Fours is said to be based on the following disaster that actually occurred years ago. One month after the disaster, a woman's corpse was found in a ditch several miles from the disaster site. Evidence showed she was alive up to a few hours before she was found. Aww. It is thought to be an exaggeration since the story became legendized, but several people who lived where the woman was found and along the route to the disaster site say they heard a knocking sound in the night. There is also another version of the story that has been passed on. The part about the woman lurking in the floor or the ceiling, seeking help every night, is the same. But in this one, the ending is that if you peer into the ceiling or floor, she will attack you. Thanks. Sorry for making you go to all this trouble. I'll hold on to these for a bit. You added the crawling woman to your file. Uh, here you go, Ray. I thought this might have some connection to that photo uh, of the shrine carpenter. Okay. A shrine carpenter is a carpenter who specializes in building temples and shrines. Okay, that's an apt name. They were formerly called temp temple and shrine carpenters, but when Shinto and Buddhism were separated in the uh, Meiji? It would be Meiji, yeah. Meiji period, 1860s. And the anti-Buddhist movement began, began, temple was removed from the name, and they became shrine carpenters. Ah, I can, I can, I can feel my mouth just like going off, off sounds today. I, I can't talk. Amongst themselves, they said, building mere a uh, house degrades one. Building mere a house degrades one. And when they did not have a building contract, they would work in farming or the like. And with only limited sight experience, refined their technique and skill. There were carpenters who only served one shrine, and special techniques, methods, and ways of mystic construction were passed on to that master builder. This photograph is of the framework with these with the carpenters lined up and the master builders at the center. As in the picture, they wore white clothing and a court hat for the framework raising ceremony. But in old times, they would wear white clothes during work as well, as it was said that a carpenter must worship the gods and Buddha. Uh, while this dress expressed piety, it may have also been a way for the shrine carpenters to assert their pride and skill before others. Thanks, I'll just borrow this for a bit. You added shrine carpenters to your file. Here you go, Ray. I thought that this might have some connection to that photo of those tattoos. Okay. This combination of snake and holly in this tattoo is primarily found in northeastern Japan. This design is chronicled in the old northeastern Japanese folktale Tattoo Maiden. Oh, this is a long one. Okay, Tattoo Maiden. A girl loses her lover, and before she fades from before he fades from her memory completely, 
She takes the pain of her remaining love and imbues it in a holly tattoo. Yet the girl falls in love once more, again she loses her lover. She engraves a tattoo of her love onto her body again. This time she engraves a divine snake so her lover's spirit will arrive safely at the place of the gods. As the girl repeats love and loss, her skin grows filled with tattoos. She cannot tolerate the pain of the tattoos and it takes its toll on her sanity. Meanwhile, her heart is eaten by the snake engraved in her soul. This legend is widely known on the plains, but depending on the region, slight differences appear. In the mountains, the following changes can be found in the story. This is called the Tattoo Master. The Tattoo Master. The girl who lost her lover goes to the mountain master to relieve her pain, to confide in her. On hearing of the girl's pains, the master engraves the snake and holly on her own body and assumes the pain. The villagers, hearing of this, visit the master one after another to relieve their pains as well. Eventually, the master's entire body is covered with tattoos. She who took on so many pains gets trapped in sleep from the pain of the engraved tattoos and cannot wake. Finally, she's eaten by the tattooed snake. The story has one more version. This was an even more tragic ending. Ah, this is probably the real one. It is likely a story designed to teach a lesson. The Tattoo Master 2. Uh, the master, covered in tattoos, goes as far as to tattoo Holly in her eyes. Then her tattooed eyes turn to mirror, and the pains engraved on the master are repelled back to the people who engraved them. In the end, every last person is eaten by the snake. See, now this, okay, when they were saying, so much pain for all the tattoos, I'm like, okay, do you know how many people get tattooed, like, head to toe? I'm like, they don't lose their sanity, they're like, check me out, and it's like, okay, that's cool. Uh, but this one here, like, yeah, we're just gonna get my eyes tattooed, now that, that's something I could see someone being like, yeah, that was a bit much, that was a bit too much for me. Uh, the part about turning to mirror may come from how snakes' eyes were traditionally thought to resemble mirrors. Oh, that's interesting. Given the change in the story, it appears that when the Tattoo Master, Legend of the Mountains, spread to the plains, it became more fable-like. The story with its priestess-like element of the Master was corrupted into a city girl's foolish love story. As far as the meaning of the snake and holly tattoo in this folktale, the holly tree represents the pain of lo love for the dead and pains of the heart. The snake is employed here in the divine sense, and its import seems to be tied into love and pathos, for the dead that devours those, including the girl and the master. Thanks, I'll hold on to it. You added tattoo folklore to your file. Ray, I was able to ask around about the, the hospital about this picture of Mrs. Taki, or Miss Taki, Miss, uh, Mrs. Takikawa. There we go. Okay, I can talk. Huh. Uh, oh yeah, this, <laughs> this one. The clothes these uh, people around Miss uh, Takigawa are wearing in the picture. They look kind of like the clothes uh, her family and lover were wearing. They were all riding in the same plane. Oh. I see. Thanks. If you need anything else, just let me know. Sure. I do have some new pictures. It seems like you're having a lot of nightmares lately. Yeah, I know, okay. Are you, you alright? You said this enough, Miku. Do my research. Is there something? Miku, I was wondering if you could research this photograph for me. <laughs> Thanks for all your trouble. She's like, what am I supposed to do with this? There's like a ghost and butterflies and like someone hot, like, okay, sure. Miku, I was wondering if you could research this photograph for me. Yeah, that one I kind of want to answer for. That one, that one I could see working. Understood. I'll let you know if I find anything. Then again, you know what? If you're going to ask anyone, Miku would be the one because, you know, she went through Fatal Frame 1. Oh. I'm sorry. I blanked out for a second. Oh, okay, so Miku's having like micro naps. She can't sleep normally, so she's just like blanking out. All right, um, attic. Yeah, we gotta check the closet. Now that we have that information, let's see if the game decides to be like, "Hey, how's it going? I'm up here in your ceiling." <laughs> yeah, maybe. Let's see.
Part of me wants to stay up here and see if, if I stay up here long enough if something will happen. Should I? Alright, I stuck around for a bit, nothing happened. I'm not gonna spend the entire time up here. By the entire time, I mean like the rest of the video. We're gonna we're gonna go down. We got I, I think we even have some notes. I mean the notes are pr basically probably just gonna like summarize what we've already learned. Right? Wait. What was that? Why is my controller rumbling? HOLY CRAP! <laughs> HOLY CRAP! Um... <laughs> HOLY CRAP! HOLY CRAP! HI! I moved! Okay, yep, that's good. Nope. Nope, nope. Nope. I'm gonna go to my closet. It's safe in here, right? Mm. Nope. I, I'm, I'm, can I sleep with you, Miku? I'm, can I sleep in your room? Like, I'll, I'll take the floor. I don't freaking care. Like... Like, who would go to sleep after that? Miku, I know you're like half my age, but, uh, hold me something. It's raining again. Lately, all I can think about is the past. Like, back when I was a child. All right. All right. All right, Ray. You stop the woman up. We're just gonna go to bed. Because ghosts are a figment of reality. But we gotta tell ourselves it's part of our imagination as a coping mechanism. Right? Yep. That's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna save. See, I, I'm actually kind of wondering how they would do that. Because, like, part of me still kind of feels safe here. Because I'm like, well, they're not gonna a actually attack me with... Uh, attack me in, we'll say, you know, quote-unquote, the real world here. Um, because... There's no way to defend myself. Like, th this is literally where my save point is. They wouldn't do that, right? And part of me is like, you be careful with those assumptions, because they are, they will, they will absolutely play with your, your, your assumptions. Do you want to sleep? No. Do I have to? Yes, to progress the game, I do. I'm just going to stop here because I'm looking at how much time I've got and I don't got much else and um, I feel like this, this is a good, actually this is a good starting point for next time and as such maybe a good stopping point for this time because it gives you a little bit of suspense like what's going on and um, yeah so we're going to stop things here. Sorry. Uh, if you like this uh, little outing, um, give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave it a thumbs down. Either way, let me know what you thought in the comment section. Next time, we're going to try to get out of the cage. We got to get out of this cage that the little girl put us in, I think. Um, that's probably that's probably a good guess of what we're going to do. Um, but until then, I would like to ask you all to game on.